Hi. So the start of this video is slightly different to the start of the last video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this video is a part two to a previous video that I've already put up on YouTube. I will leave the link to that down below if you don't know what I'm on about, but essentially this is part two of a mental health video that I've done on my channel. I want to do this intro because I forgot when I was recording, I just basically tackled all the topics and I didn't have any intro or outro. So I'm going to put on the screen now the topics discussed in this video. There are only two topics. I will leave timestamps if you need to skip over anything or any details of any trigger warnings or anything like that, just so you are aware, because I don't want any distress caused by what I'm talking about. So if you see the topics and you want to opt out or you want to skip, just use the timestamps or of course, if this video isn't for you, then feel free to click off. I need you to know that this is not planned content. It is mental health content. There are some really good topics that we do talk about in the first video. So if you want to watch that, do feel free and then come back to this one. Otherwise, let's get into the video. So the next one is, is more heavy and I haven't really done a trigger warning till now. I, I don't personally feel that anything else needs a trigger warning. I might put up some text on the screen for the other ones just in case, but they should be timestamps if you want to skip this. I'm going to tell you straight up, this next section discusses self-harm and various aspects of self-harm. It's not in graphic detail, do not worry, but it does discuss it. Um, it's as censored as I could go with it. But if that is not something you feel comfortable listening to, there will be a timestamp at the beginning of this video, but I will put it right here now and you can skip this section because I do not want to put somebody in a situation where they listen to something that, that is a trigger for them or they, they just they don't want to hear about it for whatever reason. Do you know what I mean? That's what it is. It's about self-harm. The question is, I'll reiterate, it is self-harm, how to stop and my story. So if you'd like to skip that, please do so now. I want to recap a couple of things if you are following this along and, and you have no experience of it, because that, that can happen. You know, I watch things that I don't necessarily have experience on in case I have a friend or a family member, or I just want to educate myself on some stuff. Um, I wanted to kind of go over it a little bit. Um, I am not, you know, a psychologist. I'm not, I'm not anything. I'm just a person that has struggled with self-harm. Uh, that's not really news to anybody. I know that. Um, just, just know that, again, what I say has come from me and my experience and yours might be completely different. What works for me might not work for you. My life will obviously have been much different from yours and everything else. So just take what I say. You don't, you don't have to, you know, treat it as gospel or anything like that. But if you don't know what self-harm is, it's, uh, the clue is in the name, obviously, but there are various forms of self-harm. So it is a self um, but it's a way of hurting yourself essentially when you feel in distress or you feel upset or you feel nervous or, or anything out of control, any, any of those emotions, that's me condensing it. I know it doesn't have to be the obvious things, which for a lot of people, not all is cutting themselves. For example, it could be the misuse of alcohol, the misuse of drugs. It could be exercising too much. It could be not eating. It could be eating too much. It could be other things like pulling your hair. It can be a lot of different things. And that is not all of them. There are so many ways. It's, there's a lot. Okay. So I'm not going to cover them all. I'm just kind of saying you can be someone that goes out and binge drinks when you're upset. And that is valid self-harm. So, and I'm not saying that one is more severe than another, or one is more valid than another or whatever else. I'm just letting you know there are, there's different, there's different facets, I guess. Cause I didn't know that when I was young. I did not know that at all. There was no handbook on it. I haven't experienced all of those things, obviously, but I can kind of just tell you about my story in a little bit about what I've experienced, I guess. So I'm 31. Growing up, uh, was kind of night and day a little bit. For example, um, I had a fantastic relationship with my parents. No problems there. Um, but I was actually abused by my extended family. Um, it's, it is what it is. 
I'm, I don't need to go into it. That's, it's not, I don't want to go into a lot of this, even though you're asking me for my story, because I, I don't want this to be the Kaylee Allen show. I know I'm making a video on my channel, but I think you understand what I mean by that. I'm, I'm not wanting to divulge my struggles or anything like that. That's really not what this section is about at all. I just need to give you a background as to what I've been through so you know that where my words come from and your experiences, your words, your feelings may be different to mine. But that's the case anyway. Um, I think, I don't know how long I was abused for uh, by my extended family. I think possibly around about, I mean, to be honest, it was probably earlier. Very young until I stopped going there. My parents lived in a separate place to where my extended family were and they were kind of clustered together and they didn't like me very much. So it was kind of, it was very night and day. That's why I say it was night and day because I would stay during the week with my parents and then on weekends I would go and see my extended family and it wouldn't be so good. So that's why I say it was night and day. Uh, that went away obviously when I stopped going. Eventually I stopped going. That was great. <laughs> Excellent. I wish I could have done that earlier, but you gotta do what you gotta do when you're a kid, right? Now, I'm not religious. My parents don't have a lot of money um, or anything like that. And I, I, you're probably thinking, right, who cares? I'm saying that because uh, I, I got bullied a lot in school to the point where I actually got taken out of school. And when I was, I think, 12 years old, I got taken out of my comprehensive school that I was in. It was horrible. Trust me, it was horrible. And I got put in an all-girls private Catholic school. Oh my God, I could make video after video about that. I seriously, seriously could, it's, it's insane. But I got put in that and I suffered quite a lot of stress in ways that I'd never suffered stress before. My family didn't have a ton of money. And I know you're thinking, well, how did you afford a private school? It's because my parents worked day and night without a break and they pulled in credit cards, they pulled in everything they could to put me through the school because they loved me and they wanted the best for me. And I totally thank them for that. Um, but they didn't, they weren't rich, okay? I was going to school with people that could, you know, have a new phone every six months, no problem. And, you know, their family's got like six cars. They have all the clothes, all the designer clothes, even though they're just teenagers and they don't even know what they're doing. Um, just, just insane wealth. Um, I didn't really, I wasn't really actively exposed to it because most of the girls were there to learn. And that was a great thing about the school. It wasn't just pay to get in. You did have to sit in, a, you know, like an entrance exam and, and be good enough to, to study that kind of thing. But generally, I was very different anyway to a lot of the other kids. I was a bit of a goth. I was a little bit alternative. Um, that didn't sit well with the, the mean girls at the top, should we say. It's very, very stereotypical of mean girls, my school. Um, I had a couple of friends um, that were great to me, so that it wasn't all shit. But generally, anyway, I was a bit of an outsider. Um, there's a couple of triggers for me that kicked in, I think, when I was 12 or 13, but essentially I started self-harming and my parents found out about it. It was, it was the worst day of my life, trust me. I think I nearly passed out when they found out it was awful. But I think I continued self-harming on and off throughout my entire school year in this private school. And at some point my, par my parents, my teachers found out that I was self-harming and Basically, I, I, I'm i trying not to divulge too much here because no one wants a lawsuit, but I got treated very differently because the teachers knew that I self-harmed. I was treated like, honestly, a crazy person, which is really mentally damaging for someone that's doing that. Um, you know, like if something got vandalized in school or something, they would automatically think it was me because I'm the chick that wears dark clothes and, and I self-harm. Therefore, obviously, I'm capable of vandalism and, and all these other things. Anything that happened, I'd be the first person that I would get blamed all the time. You name it, all the time. Um, that was really rough for me. I got really alienated because rumors would get round about me. And it was honestly, guys, it was the worst time. It was the worst time. I've never felt that low. I've never felt that low. Um, on top of that, I did struggle with my sexuality in school as well. Um, not easy being in an all-girls school. It's not the best way to figure out who you are. But I struggled with that a lot as well. And I didn't make it easier either, as if I wasn't already an outcast. So essentially my school life was, was royally shit. That's as much as I'm willing to go into, because honestly, it would take years to go through it again. And I don't want to. Um, my school life was really shit. By the time 
I kind of left school. My self-harm, I'd managed to kind of, I mean, I didn't stop, but I'd managed to curb it. And I hadn't really stopped. At the time, I thought I'd stop doing it, but I hadn't. It basically just turned into an eating disorder when I hit about 16, 17. So when things were kind of like rounding off a little bit in terms of like teenage development. Um, I developed an eating disorder. I had anorexia for a little while. It's taken me a long time to realize, to be honest, that my self-harm in other forms had just gone straight to that. And I was still doing the same thing. I was just doing it different. Do you know what I mean? Um, but that's a thing that happened too. Unfortunately, due to the upbringing I had with the abuse that I suffered and my very low self-esteem at that point, both physically and mentally, I ended up in a, in a real, real string, guys. <laughs> a real string of bad relationships, really bad relationships, um, from ranging from physical to emotional abuse and gaslighting and, and all of that shit. Uh, it was, it was bad. It was bad. It was one partner after another. Um, thank God I can see the signs of that now, I guess, but I, it, it just got worse and worse and worse. And it, I was just this sort of person. And I did try throughout my, I think by the time I got to like 20, I was able to really curb the self-harm and the eating thing. I'd really, I kind of got it under control. I still had my odd quirks, but I was, I was all right. Um, and I got myself to a point basically where I managed to self-harm less and less. So if, if right in the beginning of self-harming, it might be daily or multiple times a day, it got to the point where it would be once a month, once every six months. And then that six months became annually and then, um, annually became every three years. And it, it got to that point. And whereas the, the damage that I would inflict on myself when I was, younger, like 13, 14, 15, towards the damage that I was inflicting much later was superficial. I'm, I'm saying that in the, in the nicest way I can, I guess. The damage that I would inflict on myself in later years was superficial compared to the damage that I inflicted on myself um, towards the start. And it's, it, I can't, I've tried so hard to, um, to put into words how I was able to quit because it was difficult and I, I'm, it's not something I'm going to sit here on camera and say it's easy because, because if you're someone that asked me that question, I think you already know that it's not easy. And I think that's why you're asking me. Um, not for everyone, of course, some people will just be curious, but it's not easy. It's not, it, it can be done though. And I'm going to, I'm going to say something and not everyone's going to like it, but it's something that I've come to accept. And it's part of the large reason why I am okay. And I don't, I don't suffer from self-harm. And the thing I'd like to say is, if you were to ask me right now, if you were here with me and you were able to ask me, Kaylee, do you ever think you'll self-harm in your lifetime again? I can't say no. Even though, honestly, and please understand, I'm saying it right now, I'm, you know, I have no feeling that I would ever do that again in my lifetime, right? But I cannot concrete sit here and say that it would never, never happen. And I think that's actually quite important. I know it sounds quite scary, but I think the whole thing and the whole key to this for me was being okay with it. And this is so similar to the thing I said about um, being depressed or something like that and looking after your houseplants. You have to accept that failure is a possibility and be okay with it and learn to take the small wins. It's very much about that. It is, for me, it was the key to stopping. Because I think part of being able to cope with depression, with self-harm, with, with anything is accepting that, yeah, things might go wrong. Things might fuck up. I might fuck up or however you define fucking up. Do you know what I mean? Um, things might happen again, but it's okay. It doesn't mean that you've failed. It doesn't mean that you've gone backwards. Do you know what I mean? Standing still or putting a little pause on something is not going backwards. And this is so important to try and let yourself feel that. It's honestly about removing that additional pressure on you when you consider things like stopping self-harm, for example. It's honestly about removing the pressure. Obviously, you, you may or may not, if you're suffering from this, um, you may have people around you really, really hypersensitive about you never doing it again, ever, okay? 
um, that's that's not great. It's not great pressure for a person. I, I, I had that from my loved ones, obviously. They, they don't know any better. But I had that immense pressure. Don't you dare do that again. Do you know what I mean? Or there will be some sort of consequence from it. it it's really, you've got to remove that. you just got to remove it. It's the best way forward. For me, anyway, it's the best way forward. Um, it's kind of like, sorry for the analogy. I'm sorry if it triggers anybody. But it's the only analogy I can come up with. It's kind of like a crash diet, right? In terms of the concept. What do you think is going to work better? If you are an unhealthy person in terms of diet and you want to become healthy and have a great diet with all your nutrition, all your vegetables, or all the sustenance that you need, right? What is better? To go on a crash diet where it's all or nothing and you're going to go hell-bent for leather? Or, statistically speaking, because obviously there are stats on this, is it better to slowly change your mindset and your attitude towards food? Which one works better? And it's been proven time and time again, the crash diets are shit. And when you relapse, you feel worse. And actually, in terms of diets, when you relapse, you, you gain weight quicker anyway, if it's to do with weight loss. But it's very much the same as that. You need to change your mindset. And it's not something that anybody that doesn't self-harm is willing to tell you because they, they just want you to stop. They just want you to stop. And it's not that simple. And people that don't understand won't understand that. And I get that. Um, it, it just comes from a big fear and, and a lack of understanding. Like when you take away the coping mechanism that is self-harm, because that's what it is. You don't suddenly have a new coping mechanism. And I proved that to myself. I've got my own proof. That's when I tried to stop self-harming, I ended up with an AD, right? I didn't have a new coping mechanism. That's why I didn't stop. I just changed it. It's not stopping. Do you know what I mean? Damage is, is just as bad. Do you know what I mean? Eating disorders kill. It's one of very few mental disorders that, that can kill um, in a very, very physical way. You don't have the coping mechanism when you go cold turkey like that, but you haven't changed anything. Do you know what I mean? And that's why it doesn't, it's, it's not gonna be a, a good process for you mentally. It's, it's gonna put a lot of strain on you and it's about removing that. And I understand why people on the outside want that thing for you, I get it. But there is a thing about self-harm and not everyone's gonna get it, but People think that when you self-harm, you know, if you have an ED or you're cutting yourself or whatever it is, that you are trying to die. Um, the misconception is that you're not. And I, I used to always say this to myself, and this is going to resonate with people on, on a shit ton of levels, but you're not trying to die. You're trying to live. And that is something that people cannot understand unless they have experienced it in some way or, or got to a point where they can understand it. And I don't know how to explain it to people other than simply to say that. You're not trying to die, you're trying to live. It's a coping mechanism. And I know it seems to someone on the outside so ridiculous. I know that. But that is what it is. As someone that has self-harmed in the past, that is what it is. You are not trying to die, you are trying to live. It is the opposite, you know? That's a hard thing for people to understand, and I, I do get that. But you need a coping mechanism. The best way to start is to listen to yourself more. Learn to listen to yourself, try and evaluate what might trigger you, and try, this was a big one for me, try and learn in yourself when you think you may be approaching an episode of self-harm. Try very hard to recognize it. Recognize the tiny little voice that kicks in at the back here before it becomes the voice in here. Do you see what I'm saying? Try and tackle it as early as you can. Not even tackle it, sorry, that's the wrong word. Just try and recognize it. Work on that first. Don't overload yourself. You're already massively overloaded, okay? That's, that's why you feel this way. You're already overloaded. Try and recognize the pattern because I promise you it will be a pattern. There will be a pattern, there nearly always is. And it takes a long time to work it out. Also for a lot of people, um, some things are very cyclic. It was for me, um, and for me, I mentioned before, it was about making that cycle further apart. So it got from like, you know, daily, weekly, monthly, annually. It was about really pushing apart that cycle. I used to say something to myself and um, I don't, don't really know how I feel about it. 
kind of rethinking about it for, for doing this video because I had to really sit and think about it. And honestly, I haven't, I've kind of buried a lot of it, but I used to sometimes say it to myself, you know, if I still feel this way in seven days, then maybe I might do it, but I'm going to give myself seven days. That is very hard to do. Trust me, I come from where you come from. I understand that's hard to do, but it, it's possible. I used to say, look, if I feel this way in X amount of time, maybe I might reconsider. You're still speaking in your own language. You're not doing things in the way that somebody else says. Do you know what I mean? Um, think about that. Obviously, try and break the cycle with doing something that makes you happy. Go for a walk, all of that. I know that's really cliche. I'm trying to avoid that advice because I know that's the obvious advice. So don't think I'm discrediting that. I'm not. I'm just trying to give you the advice from someone that's gone through it. Try, give yourself another chance. It's always about accepting the risk of failure and giving yourself another chance. Think to yourself, right, if I still feel like this in seven days, right, we'll tackle it then. We'll, we'll reconsider then. Obviously, when it gets to those seven days, hopefully you're going to do the same thing again because you will look back at the last seven days and realize, hey, but I went seven days. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be seven days, by the way. Start with one, start with, you know, whatever. Try, keep trying. And you will notice that you're building up strength because you went seven days before you've got to this point and you're still considering it. It doesn't matter if you're still considering it. You've just gone seven days. Do you know what I mean? Eventually that seven days can be right. If I still feel like this in two weeks, I'll, I'll reconsider it then. And those time periods get longer and longer. And that's what would happen for me. If you get to a point where you think, well, yeah, Kaylee, but what if I still want to do that? You know, what if I still want to uh, commit to an episode of, of self-harm of some thought? The only tip I probably have there is, and I, I tried to do this. Um, my parents were a bit worried about me, so they stopped me doing a lot of things that were honestly very good coping mechanisms. Um, but if you really feel like you've got to that point, you, just, you feel like you're at that point of no return. Give yourself one last shot and either write it down or draw it. And I don't actually give a shit how graphic that drawing is. I don't care. Draw whatever comes out of your mind. Draw it. Write it. Whatever you need to do. Don't then keep it unless you really feel it helps you. I, I advise you to get rid of it. Burn it. Do whatever. When it, whenever you're ready to. Give yourself that last ditched chance to not commit to an episode of self-harm and that might help you for me i definitely started drawing i drew a lot when i was a kid my parents were very concerned um i, I drew a lot of i think i drew a lot of girls crying it's, it's really sad when you look back at it but i did um and then i would write a lot and i loved creative writing i turned that into a good thing obviously um because I, I wrote good stuff i didn't write um you know bad stuff um, I, I enjoyed that too so i was able to do that for a while um, if, if it helps you, you know, I've, I've done things where I've gone and listened to music and I've gone for a walk or, or something like that. Be safe. Obviously guys, be safe, but stuff like that, you know, if going to the gym helps you and it's not a trigger for you, you know, into self-harm, go to the gym, blast some music, just get it out of you. Do whatever you can to get it out. Give yourself that one last shot. Keep talking to yourself. It doesn't make you crazy. Keep talking to yourself and go, right, if I feel this way in seven days, Let's consider it then. If you get to that point and you can't say to yourself, if I feel this way in seven days, give yourself that one last shot. And all you're doing is creating buffers and you're creating a sliding scale of how you feel and you're starting to um, create like a map of, of how, how you feel and how far along a certain side of the scale that you are. And that helps you understand yourself a little bit better. You start to understand your triggers, you start to figure out the patterns, and that for me was the best way to help me stop. You're gonna try to do this. I'm, I'm not the kind of person, I'm so sorry, I'm not the kind of person that's gonna sit here and say it's all rosy, you know that by now. You're gonna try and stop and you, you will occasionally fail. But the, the point is, one, it's okay to fail. Two, you are going to fail less and less. You will, providing you keep trying like that, you keep trying to do those things, you will fail less and less. Your instances will get further and further apart. Again, no, this isn't a be all and end all. I realize that certain things I've experienced it myself, such as anorexia nervosa, um, when you don't eat, it fucks with your brain and you can't necessarily think as rationally anymore. 
because it, it affects your brain. I, I've experienced it. I fucking 100% get it. It can do that with depression. I understand that. This is a general guideline. So please don't, don't shoot the messenger if I get some of this wrong. But I think you, you kind of get what I'm saying. Just give yourself a chance. Know that you might fail. That is okay. It's not about the failing. It's about learning your patterns and giving yourself chances and creating buffers. That's what it's actually about. It's not about cold turkey. If you want to try it and that's that works for you, great. But it didn't work for me. For me, and it gets on very nicely to my last subject, I managed to turn my self-harm into self-care. And now, whenever I feel under the weather, I mean, I, I tend to show when I'm tired or when I'm upset. It shows on my face. And I don't mean like if I've been crying. I mean like lines under my eyes. My complexion will go anything. I just wear my shit on my face. I really do. I really, really do. I always have done. It's, it's not a cool thing. Um, makes you wear more makeup. But when I'm having a bad day and I recognize it, I, I go into self-care because I improve the outside and I take care of the outside and it takes care of the inside for me. Again, it won't work for everyone. I remember when I started my channel, when I did my first video, I was so scared of showing my arms on my channel. One, for fear of the comments I would get, and two, quite honestly, for fear of triggering people. Um, that was never a trigger for me, seeing it on someone else personally, but I know that it is for some people, and I was really worried about that, because the last thing I want is to trigger anybody or anything like that, but eventually I decided to just wear them, because I want people to see what's on the other side of all this. And although I feel uncomfortable when someone mentions it in a comment section or whatever, or, or they ask me or something, that uncomfortableness goes away very quickly because I feel like I'm doing more good by showing them. I mean, I don't deliberately show them, but if they're out, they're out. It's hot in here. I'm not being funny. This is like 28 degrees. I'm in a t-shirt. If I show them, I show them, right? I'm just not going to hide them. I'm not going to, you know, show them off. I'm not going to hide them. I'm just going to be me. I'm going to wear a t-shirt. Um, I do that so people can see, you know, wow, look at her. Like this channel with loads of people watching and she's showing them. She's, she's clearly developed some form of something to allow her to do that. And hopefully people will see that and think it's doable. Do you know what I mean? It's doable. It can be done. I'm not saying it's easy, but it can be done. People always ask me on this channel, like, how do you get the drive every single day to get up and work? How do you put so much energy into every little thing you do? Like your content, why is it this ridiculously high production quality? Why are you such a perfectionist? Why are you so driven? How are you able to do this and not have a break? The answer is because I have a determination that I kind of brewed up within myself for the last 10 years, and that has come from basically stopping self-harming. I have a level of determination that people can never understand. Do you know what I mean? Because I've been to that place and I'm out of the other side. It can be done. You just have to build it up slowly like a ball of moss, kind of rolling down a hill. And I have this determination, and I tell you what, when I want to do something, guys, I will do it. But the thing is, whereas previously when I was a kid, I use that to do harm to myself, never others, always myself. I now use that to do something awesome. And I absolutely bleed my energy, forgive the pun, very sorry. I put my energy into awesome shit, shit that I feel is awesome. I put it into my business. I try and put it into my content. I put it into anything that I can possibly put into. I do my best. I graduated top of my class in university. I, I moved here. I got, at the time, obviously, it was my dream job. I quit my job. I worked on this channel. I've created this shop. I have so many more plans for the shop, and I'm going to keep on doing it because I'm so determined. But I just, it's not something that I have to try too hard to be anymore. Um, and that's not meant to sound up my own ass. What I mean by that is I used to have to really try. But... It's, it's a lot more second nature now because I've gone through so much shit, so much shit. I look back and I almost can't believe I've done it all, to be honest. I actually can't believe some of the things that have happened to me, some of the things I've gone through. Sometimes I sit there and I'm like, holy shit, you know? But I've got through that and it was hard. It was hard. It was really, really, really fucking hard, but I got through it and now I can harness my determination and put it into other shit. And there is a way to do it. It just isn't overnight. But I promise you, if 
if you just try, I know you might feel like you don't want to, but if you just try, I swear to you, I swear to you in, in, in a period of time, I don't want to give a time frame on it, but you will see results and they might start small. But if you try that whole like seven day thing, one day thing, you, you will see if you just keep allowing yourself to give yourself chances, those instances will get further apart. You will recognize your patterns and you will become stronger. And there is your baseline. Once you've got that, you've got some tools to start getting up when you're down a little bit quicker. And each time you go down, you get up a little bit quicker or you don't fall down as hard. And I promise you, it's a cumulative effect. It's just, it's not overnight. It's not overnight. But also there is self-care. <laughs> and thank you for sticking with me through that section. That's, it's, uh, depending on, on what your experience is, whether it's, you know, a best friend or a, a family member that's self-harming or, you know, you've suffered with it. I understand a lot of that's not nice to hear. And, but if you did stick with me, thank you. I hope that was helpful. I've tried to talk about it in a way that is, it's not detail where there doesn't need to be detail. You know what I'm saying? But I, I hope that was helpful. So. The last part I actually have no notes on. I ran out of time while I was planning this video, but the last part is, what was the question? It was self-care and how to cope when you're down. This is a little bit more surface level compared to obviously some of the other things that we've discussed. But for me, it is self-care. That is how I do cope when I'm down, when I'm tired, when I'm fed up, when I'm stressed, when I'm angry, when I'm anything. My thing is self-care. For some people, it might be exercise. It might be cooking a meal. It might be... Uh, I can't think of anything right now. It might be playing music. It might be putting on some makeup and experimenting with that. It could be, it could be a lot of things. So when I say self-care, I mainly mean it in, I mean, a lot of the time it's skincare. I don't really know why that is, but it's skincare. Um, or like doing my nails or like all of that. I'll just kind of go hard on that. And I'm, I'm actually genuinely very proud of myself that I can sit here as someone that used to self-harm and have completely flipped it into self-care that that might not last forever but i'm really harnessing at the minute and it's awesome it's hard to do but you can do it so for me it's usually skincare um i'm, I'm all about that because that's something you it shows on your face and you, you if you look better you feel better a lot of the time so that's that's why i do that like i'll have a nice bath i will not necessarily do a bubble bath because I wash my hair in the bath, but I will put on a podcast or queue up some YouTube videos on my tablet or whatever. I'll play some music. I might put some candles on, some nice smellies. I might have a manicure. I'll do a face mask. Like there's a lot of different things that I might do. And that for me works. Now for me, that works because I'm not actually a very active person. Um, for me, I'm not like a super active person. Like for example, a holiday to me is I'm lying in the sun in the pool in the sea and I'm just having a great fucking time. Do you know what I mean? I'm not doing a lot of much, but that's because I do a lot day to day. For somebody else, um, Ben, for example, his version of a holiday is probably, you know, there'll be a lot of, um, I don't know, wakeboarding and stuff like that in the sea and it's very active or it's skiing or it's something active because he works differently to me. And that's a cool thing about self-care is understanding which way you fall and I think a good indicator of that is to imagine your perfect holiday. If you imagine your perfect holiday, I'm not necessarily the location, but the things you are doing, that's quite a good indicator of what is probably going to make you feel good in self-care. Because honestly, for everyone, it isn't going and doing exercise. Because for some people, when they feel down, they feel shit, they will go to the gym. Um, I've had that work for me, actually. I, I actually have, because exercise does release endorphins and it can genuinely make you feel better. So that's not really an if that's, that does work. But generally, um, I think you've got to have a lot of get up and go still left in you. If you feel like shit to go and do that, if it's not the natural thing for you. So for me, if I feel down in order for me to go to the gym, I have to not feel that down at all. I have to feel pretty good actually. Um, otherwise I'm just going to sit there. I am just going to sit there and I don't, always go to the self-care aspect of it if I'm too tired either. It's like a really narrow window in the middle that you have to catch. Because if you're super tired, super down, super whatever, you're not gonna wanna do anything. And if you're not really that at all, then you're borderline okay, 
and different things fix it. So again, it's about creating a scale of how you feel and what works for you at that given point because it changes and no one talks about this and I don't understand why. So for me, exercise does not work. Um, obviously, scientifically, it does work. If I had the get up and go, it would work, but I don't. I, I work a lot. I work hard. When I want to chill the fuck out, I am not going to move. I'm sorry, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to move. I'm going to sit on the sofa and I'm going to do some stuff or I'm going to have a bath or whatever. That works for me. It might not work for you. You might want to go out and walk the dog. You might want to go to the beach. You might want to, again, go to the gym. You might want to go out for a drive. You might want to go and go to the supermarket and get loads of ingredients and cook a new dish. Like, it, it just depends. It's so not one size fits all. Um, I mean, I advocate self-care in the form of like baths and skincare and all that anyway, just because it, it is, again, it's like exercise, right? It does benefit you. But in terms of like, there's, there's, there's different aspects of self-care. One is like maintenance self-care to keep you on a level. And then the other kind of self-care is, is like a revival, right? Something in your time of need. And they are different. And I can't really give too much advice on this because everyone really is that different because the amount of people that have told me when I'm down to go for a walk and I just go, ugh, and I just roll my eyes at them because I don't want to do it. Don't get me wrong, if I did do it, yeah, I'd probably feel better. I know that. But the key to it, I think, is doing stuff that's the most easy and the most effortless for you. So self-care can also be, by the way, ordering a monster takeaway and putting on Netflix. I do that more times than I care to admit. That's totally a thing. Now, obviously, there is a thing of, you know, doing it to excess and everything else. That's a valid thing, you know. It's completely valid. Do, do whatever you need to do. It is subjective. So for me, you've got baths, skincare, anything that involves doing not a lot. Uh, if I had all the money in the world, I'd book myself into a spa because that's absolutely ideal for me. Doing a whole bunch of nothing, excellent. Um, if I'm feeling more on the upside, I might go shopping. That's something I enjoy. Um, I earn a little bit more money now and I'm able to actually go into shops. Fun story, from the ages of like 20 to 28, I couldn't afford to do that because I didn't have any money and I wouldn't even go window shopping because that would piss me off. So um, I do that a little bit when I'm feeling more on the up. Um, I love going for food as well when I'm on the up. I don't actually eat when I feel really down. I'm someone that turns away from food when I'm distressed. Um, but as I say, it's so subjective. So for me, it's about not doing a lot for other people. It might be the opposite. So my honest advice is to, uh, one of the ways to do it anyway is to model, uh, your self care off like your perfect holiday and draw from those things. Cause when you think of a holiday, you think of escapism, you think of fun. That's what a holiday is. So try and take the elements of your dream holiday and stick it into your self care whether that's being more active or not being more active. Do you know what I mean? Try that if you can. That's probably my best advice that will work for everybody, I think. So with that in mind, I actually think we're done. This has been a two-part video for you guys. I don't know how long I've been sat here. I didn't, I didn't even check when we started filming, but I've gone through several raw files, which are 30 minutes long each. So I've been here a while. Thank you so much for sticking with me for these videos. Again, no, it's not typical plant content. It's got really not a lot to do with plants, but it would be real shit if the only purpose I had on this platform was to tell people, you know, what plants ship well, or my favorite plants. How shit would that be? What a misuse of experience and advice that I may or may not be able to help you with. What a misuse of that. Do you know what I mean? I want to be able to do something good. So if this video doesn't go down very well, if you think, yeah, no, 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 no. Just let me know. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be offended. I'm genuinely not going to be offended, guys. If you write a comment going, look, I, I don't, no, 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 no. Then write the comment. Don't attack anybody that writes that in the comment. They're entitled to that opinion. I genuinely want to know. Just be nice about it. That's all I can say. Um, if you thought that this was super helpful, also, write a comment. If you've got any tips for anybody on um, certain aspects of anything I've said, then leave a comment on that too. Um, we're all here to help. That's the whole point, right? We're all here to help each other. Um, if you think that this video should be in a different format, i.e. it's not just me sat here, then let me know. Personally, I think this is the best way to do it because 
I, um, I, I don't feel like I can repop whilst talking about this. I would run out of stuff anyway. But if you can think of a better format or, you know, just, just what I'm basically saying is just tell me what you think. <laughs> just tell me what you think. Um, I'm going to go now. Uh, that was a lot. I'm going to, I'm going to stand outside. You can't hear it, but I think it's raining and it's, it's a bit loud. So I'm going to go. Thank you so much for sticking with me, whether you watched all of the sections, all of the parts, or you watched one and it either helped you or didn't help you. Thank you very much for watching. I love you all very, very much. And I will see you as usual in the next video. Bye guys.